Hello, 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 wherever you might happen to be. A very good evening and thank you for joining us tonight in support of the extraordinary work of the Sir David Martin Foundation. Hello, everybody here. Yay! Hello, everybody watching online and at home. I hope you're hearing everything. Um, there's lots of chat rooms on the side there, so talk to us if there's any issues and that sort of thing. But otherwise, great to have you engaged with us as well. I'm James Valentine. I'm from uh, ABC Radio, and I'm part of the, the funding network who are powering this event tonight, and a great pleasure to be here helping out. One of, uh, one of Sydney, one of Australia's fabulous organisations, the Sir David Martin Foundation. Let me begin by, uh, as all good Australian events do, by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land upon which we meet tonight, and that's the Gadigal people of the Aora Nation. I pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging, I acknowledge that it always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Tonight's event is powered by the Funding Network, an Australian non-for-profit that brings people together for good. We've got, as I said, about 100 here, about 50 or so at home. So, in fact, it might be nice if we can sort of bring everybody together. See that camera out the back there? Just turn around and go, hey, hey, everybody, hi, we're at the ASX. Hi, we're putting our lives in danger for you. We've come to the city, which is not far from the eastern suburbs of Sydney. So that's how bold and brave you are. You've come out in about three degrees and you could be breathing anything, really, at, uh, <laughs> at, uh, at this point, you know. It's, um, have you noticed, I've been intrigued, in fact, in our year of COVID, how often it seems to be that the person you know, case number one, case number two, is so busy. <laughs> I'm starting to think it's a symptom. I think it's like early onset COVID, you suddenly want to go to 16 venues in one day. It's very peculiar, isn't it? But anyway, hopefully we're all here together. It might be an event we end up remembering as the last time we could all go out <laughs> as well. So I say really enjoy yourselves, you know. You won't be sitting this close tomorrow, could be the, uh, could be the case. But anyway, great to have you all here. And um, if it, as I said, if it doesn't go quite as planned, if you're listening online, watching online, there is a chat box there. You can talk there. If you're on the phone, you can uh, toggle between the view and the chat and the like. If there's any issues there, post them to the chat. The uh, chat manager will do their best to respond. So we've got a fast-paced program planned. I'll explain all in a moment or two. But it's, uh, as I said, it's really good fun. You'll get it as, uh, as we go along. You'll love it by the end. I'd like to invite, invite uh, Helen Keneally, who's General Manager of Sir David Mountain Foundation, to welcome you all to the event. Helen. Thanks, everybody. How exciting to be in a venue. Wonderful. Um, I'd like to add to James's acknowledgement of country. Um, a lot of the young people that seek help identify as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander, and we want to acknowledge and um, respect their traditional and cultural beliefs and their continual connection to country and really recognize that these are a very special and important group of young people because they're the future of our First Nations people um, here in Australia. So I'd like to also welcome um, the Board of Governors. Thank you so much for attending tonight. And we have a very special guest tonight, Lady Martin. Um, we haven't seen, well, none of us have been at an event for quite a while. It's lovely to see you here with us tonight, Susie. And all of the Martin family, so Will is our chairman, Anna, um, works alongside the team at Sir David Martin Foundation, and I know Sandy is joining us online. So um, there are lots of friends and family online, so thank you so much for um, coming along. Um, obviously, these events do not happen without a community. Um, I'd like to uh, thank our corporate partners, Investa and NextGen, um, for their uh, continual support through a really tough year that everyone has had. Um, wow, isn't it great to be in the ASX? Thank you, the Australian Stock Exchange, for providing this venue. We're really stoked. Um, it's fantastic. Um, we have a fantastic um, fundraising committee for this event, and you have been sampling some of the delights of their hard work tonight with the um, beautiful Maui um, Hennessy Australia and Plantagenet Wines and um, uh, the Brick Lane Brewers as well. Um, we will have some beautiful Lint chocolates to share later, and Lint have always been a really good supporter of us and the young people at Triple Care Farm. 
So I suppose on to what we're here for tonight. You're going to hear about um, the wonderful programs at Triple Care Farm. And I would like to acknowledge our service um, partner and major partner, Mission Australia, um, without whom none of this great work would happen. Um, Gabriella Holmes is in our audience tonight, um, actually hopefully enjoying being our guest for a change. We normally stick Gab up on the stage and we've got some of her fantastic staff doing that tonight instead. So thanks Gab for the fantastic work you do. Um, we'd just like to point out that some of these stories might be a little bit disturbing, so have your tissues ready. Um, if you are disturbed by any uh, serious way, you know the lifeline number to, to please call, and all of that information is on our website. Um, but there will be fun later, so thank you so much for that. And the Sir David Martin Foundation contributes over $3.2 million every year to support the work at Triple Care Farm. Um, tonight, the presenters will be acknowledging certain elements that they um, need help and support with. So we encourage you to join us in that support. And please don't feel limited by the amounts that they say. Everything that you um, give tonight will go to helping even more young people in crisis. Um, and just finally, I'd like to acknowledge uh, one of the presenters, Ellie, is a graduate of the program and is our youth ambassador. And we're really proud to have her on our team and working with us. So thanks so much. Thank you, Helen. And can I also reiterate Helen's very warm welcome to uh, Lady Suzanne Martin. Let's a round of applause for uh, Lady who's joining us tonight. Thank you so much. And thank you for the uh, excellent work that she does and all at uh, the David Martin Foundation. Now, we're going to get to it. It's, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be straight into this and you'll be, you know, inspired as we go along. You'll be hearing from three presenters tonight. <clears throat> They'll be telling you about the life-saving programs that they're involved with at the Triple Care Farm in the New South Wales Southern Highlands. They'll then ask you for support. Each presenter will have six minutes to tell their story. And then they can answer your questions. So if you've got things you want to know, if as you're listening, you, you know, questions occur to you, don't hesitate to ask. You know, they want to tell you about what's going on. We want you to know what's happening at uh, Triple Care Farm. So ask your questions at the, uh, at the end of each presentation. After we've heard from all three presenters, we're going to facilitate a live pledging session here in person, as well as online through the chat. And I'll give you more instructions about that when we get to that part of the program. So let's kick off our very first presenter tonight is Deb Moxie. She's the program manager at Triple Care Farm's Youth Withdrawal Unit, known as David Martin Place, the first of its kind in New South Wales. In this role, she manages a multidisciplinary team who provide 24-7 clinical and psychosocial support for up to 10 young people at a time. The facility manages the complex needs of each individual, giving them a safe and supportive environment to break free from drug and alcohol addiction. Deb is a registered nurse and midwife and she holds a master's degree in education. She's also a mother of five and a grandmother of two, so extra kudos to her for joining us tonight, despite uh, that, you know, what with all that, and her broken ankle. So uh, give her plenty of time to get up on stage. Uh, here she is, Deb Moxie. Oh, walking so well. Looking terrific. See, that's good. Yes. Well done. Yes. So this is called resilience. Okay. So thanks, James. I'm going to start off with a pretty serious question. So does anybody know the percentage of young people that come into detox with mental health issues? What would you think it would be? 40%, 50%? You know what? It's 90%. So 90% of those kids that come into detox already have existing mental health conditions. Mostly they come in with um, depression and anxiety. And out of these 90%, um, these 15% of these kids have quite serious mental health issues. So they have schizophrenia, they have um, bipolar, di bipolar disorder, they have um, oppositional defiance order. So there's a whole list of things that come out. And what happens is, you know, and why do you think there's a correlation between drug taking and mental health? It's because, you know, they, they have pain, they have trauma. The stories that we hear 
uh, just horrendous. And, you know, sometimes I, I listen to these stories when they come in and we assess them, and I think, my God, if I had your life, I'd take drugs too. And they do it to anaesthetise the pain. But what happens is when we take the pain, when we take the anaesthetic away, which is the substance abuse uh, use, is all those emotions come out. And these are very immature brains. They don't have the emotional intelligence to deal with it. And it's a really, really traumatic, traumatic um, experience from it. So it's not just reducing the drug, the, the drug addiction. It's about managing the psychosocial part of it at, 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 as well and teaching them those skills. Um, you know, and it's a bit like the chicken or the egg. What came first, the chicken or the egg? The, the drug abuse or the mental health? Um, it is, you know, it is, it is a, it's a, the unit that I work in that I'm, I'm very honoured to work in. You know, we provide a safe, comfortable, non-judgmental place that the kids feel comfortable. They're going to have a pretty tough journey, um, you know, detoxing from drugs. There's a lot of physical side effects, but we also have to support them emotionally as well. So I think, I think what I would like to do is I'd like to share a story about one of our young people called Mary. So Mary is a 22-year-old young woman from country Victoria. She has a history of domestic violence, homelessness, sexual assault, um, many years of very, very heavy polydrug use, um, neglect, malnutrition. So she came, into our, she came into our unit and she was a bit like a you know, deer in the headlights. Any minute she was going to bolt out the door, but she stayed. Now her detox was significantly hard for her. So it probably took us about two weeks to actually detox her from, um, from the drugs that she was using. And at times she couldn't walk, she could barely eat, she could barely feed herself. It was a very, very challenging time for her. But the reason I bring up this story is that once we got rid of the drugs out of her system, out, come all the, out came all the emotional baggage that she'd been carried. And, and that's part of our role to do. It's not just taking the drugs away, it's actually supporting those other things as well. So we noticed that she was having, you know, the insomnia came back. She was having nightmares. It was, you know, she couldn't eat, she couldn't sit still. She, you know, she was in a real mess. So we actually got her a, um, a psychiatry appointment and she has ADHD. So all those years she's been having ADHD. We got on some medication um, and she completed her detox in about six weeks. And she moved over to the residential rehab side, which Tamara will, will talk to you about. Um, and I asked, I said, how do you feel now you've got these drug, you know, these, these ADHD drugs on board? And she said to me, and I'm a bit scared to move too much in case I fall over. But she said to me, and she said, I used to be like this. And she said, but now I'm like this. So she could read a book, first time she could read a book in 12 years because she couldn't sit still. So she was like our little ever ready bunny. So now Mary has completed her detox. She spent 110 days in, at Triple Care Farm, which I think is actually, she told us on graduation, that's the longest anybody stayed there, but that's what she needed. She completed all her work. She was a very keen gardener. She, she would cook. Um, she's left the program now. She's doing living independently and she's completing a Cert for in community services because she said she wants to give back. You know, and I just felt really honoured to be able to watch that journey. And it still makes me tear up because it was such a hard, you know, hard thing for us to have to watch as a mother. Um, but it was, you know, I just, I'm so proud. I'm just so proud of her. Um, I'd also, so I think the other thing that, that the, the benefit that we do, I think the greatest benefit that we give is we give these kids safety, we give them kindness and we care a lot. It's a purpose built building, you know, specifically for kids 16 to, to 24. I'm supposed to say young people, but I think having five kids and being a grandmother, I can call them kids. So we just we don't just take the drugs, you know, get the drugs out of their system. You know, we teach them other skills as well. So you know, we teach them to cook. We teach them to do basic basic skills. Make a bed. Some of these people haven't had role models or family members to actually to be able to teach us those skills. The other thing we do is we teach them that there's more food groups than Maggi noodles and toast because apparently they are a food group on their own. So we do have them there for emergency purposes, but they do learn to cook and it's just, it's just a joy. I think probably one of my happiest moments is on a Friday afternoon when I'm leaving. So day one, they come into the unit. Day three and four, they're usually pretty physically sick. 
um, and it's a really, really tough time and we manage that, those symptoms. So day thir by Thursday, they're starting to feel it. Most of them are starting to feel a little bit better. Friday afternoon, I leave for home. They're all laying all over the lounge as teenagers do. They've got a cup of tea, they've got a blanket on, they're watching a movie and they're going, see you, Deb, have a good weekend, see you Monday. And I'm thinking, yes. And it just fills me with joy to see these kids. They're like little butterflies coming out of a dark hole. You know, they've just blossomed. And you see their personalities and they're hilarious. But, we, you know, we provide them things. You know, we have basketball courts and we have PlayStations and things that teenagers, you know, it's very relative to what they actually do. So I guess for us, um, these things are very expensive to run a, run a place like David Martin Place and the withdrawal unit. Oh, you can see our beautiful unit. And yep, they're the lounges that they slob all over, limbs everywhere. Um, you know, it is, it does cost a lot of money. So um, I guess it comes down to financial support. So your contribution tonight can fund a psychological consult and assessment for one young person um, and the, those first brave steps that come through the door. You can imagine, you know, some people are so scared to actually have that Band-Aid ripped off and how are they going to feel and they're, they're so frightened. So a pledge of $1,000 tonight helps provide one young person with a registered nurse 24 hours a day for one week. And $4,000 will provide nursing support for four young people for a week. So, you know, I have to say, you know, it's so, so purpose-built for teenagers. And I think that's the, that's the gift. Lots of people come there and they go, oh, my goodness, I just didn't think it was going to be like this. I thought there'd be creepy old men in the corner. Um, and, and it's just so, it's just not institutionalised. Even though we have clinical care, it doesn't look like, it looks like someone's house. And I think that's, that's what it is. This, my staff are amazing. They're, they're specialists, but they're kind and they're compassionate and they don't judge. The kids come from fractured families. They often don't have dental care. They're malnourished. But we manage to meet all those needs and they come out whole. Um, you know, and it's just wonderful to see, to, you know, to get them into society and start moving forward in their goals. So I think with your help tonight, hopefully we can release some more butterflies into the world. So thank you very much. Well done. You stay around there. Okay. I'll come the other side. Have All right. That one. Just, just so mindful there's so a few things. So you've got questions, just, you know, put them up and we'll uh, happily, uh, happily put them to death. How do they get to you? Where do they come from? They come from all over Australia. So we have many people, they, they ring up and they have an assessment. They say, I want to come here. Sometimes the kids, um, they do, the families are at the end of their tether and they're, they're pressuring the kids for the right reasons to come there. Sometimes they have a community corrections order. Um, Sometimes it's not the right time for them to come and often, you know, that's sometimes why they stay. We actually have an 89% um, successful treatment rate within our unit. I th say it's only 89%, but um, some kids just aren't ready. But I think what we do is we plant a seed and they think, oh, this is okay, I feel safe, I feel comfortable, I'm not going to be judged, I'm not going to be punished, no one's going to yell at me and they actually come back. Yeah. So it's just about planting the seed, making them feel safe and comfortable. And can you give us a sense of, of what it is you do? I mean, I would imagine what you were describing with Mary, that every person's different and there's a different <coughs> technique for every person. Absolutely. But what are some of the fundamentals underneath that? So some of the fundamentals, and you're right, every single person has a different story. They're on a different jury. They take, you know, their substance abuse is different. So how we would manage somebody that has an alcohol dependence is very different to someone who's on methamphetamines. So it is a very, very tailored program and each withdrawal process is actually very, very different. Some people feel very unwell and we manage those symptoms, sort of get them out at the end. Some people do better than others, but it really depends on the amount, the type, the length, how old the young person is. We know the younger that they start taking drugs is it's going to affect their, their brain development and you've got that, you know, that reward centre in the brain saying, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. But they don't have the capacity or the, the, the emotional intelligence to actually manage those feelings. Yeah. So it yeah. is, it's very, very different. Yeah. What would you like to know? Any questions? Steve explaining it so well, nothing you need. Yes? 
So that was how many young people are in the facility at any time. So mic runners, if you keep an eye out, this is when you need to run and get a mic in there. So stand up, um, Effie and uh, Ellen, be ready for those. That's all right. How many young people at, at, at any one time? So we can have a maximum of 10 young people. Generally, we have between about five and seven, um, and it depends on the length of stay. So with Mary, she actually stayed in the unit for six weeks. The program sort of runs you, is between one and four weeks. Generally, it's about a two-week stay, but for Mary, she needed more, um, and she stayed for six weeks. So you might find that they only need five days. So it is, you know, different different courses for different horses. Mm. And, and I think that's the beauty of it. It's very much individual care. Mm. For some, I imagine it's the first break they've ever had. Yep. You know, like a, ho like a holiday. I mean, I'm, I'm trivialising like that, but I mean a break from whatever the life it is that's leading to, to and, everything else. you know, and I've learnt things like crack dens and meth pipes and mm. things that I didn't even really know a lot of. And then the kids share these things and, oh, my goodness, I thought you poor darlings. Yeah come here and let's take care of you. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. just so, it, you know, it's so rewarding that yeah. they that they um, come out the other side. So let's get a mic on uh, Julie, just in front of you there. So, all, uh, all good, I have a, a oh, mic up. Mic anyway, there you go. Um, <laughs> some lovely comments yeah. coming online for you, Deb. Congratulations, great pitch. Um, and there's a question, what does detox look like? Oh, good question. Look, de as I said, detox looks different for pretty much everyone. However, there are some classic symptoms that you might find. So there's headache, there's nausea, there's sweating, there's shaking, there's insomnia, there's extreme agitation. Um, sometimes it can, when you take the drugs away, they can go into what's called psychosis and they can be get very angry and violent. But what we do is we, you know, we, we're very, very um, aware of where that person is emotionally and we can de-escalate those, those angry behaviours, those irritable behaviours before they escalate. So it's about... Um, it's a lot of physical symptoms, nausea, constipation. Everybody's different, but they're sort of the basic um, physical symptoms that we see that we that we see presented most of the time. Yeah, yeah. Not pretty. Yes, sir. Let's get a mic onto you. And uh, what do you want to know? No, no. It's for the online. Oh, it's for the one? online oh, people. Sorry, for the online people. Yeah. Um, do you get any government support, be it state or federal, for your services? Yes, we do get some support um, from um, Gab, if you're out there, from, um, from NADA. So they do provide some support for us. Right. So What's National... NADA? Gab, can you answer that for us? Thanks, Deb. No worries. Um, we, uh, the withdrawal unit has 40% funding from New South Wales Health, um, but it's the only funding that we have for that one element of the program, so it's a small part of it. Overall, the support for Triple Care found from the government's about 13%, so it's very small. Um, so, um, yeah, the, the work that we do is philanthropically supported and able to be nimble and responsive because of that. Yeah, terrific. Did Thanks, you have a question yeah. as well, or yes? Yeah, we, we typically read in the press that uh, if people want to detox, then you've got a much greater chance of success. Can you talk for a moment about people who come in and, yeah, they want to detox, that's great in day one, but day five maybe have changed their minds a little bit, etc. So people who really don't want to be there, what happens then? Absolutely. And that look, that does happen. And I think it's about their their ready, readiness and their, their knowledge about the process. So sometimes we have people that get into the car park um, and they just dissolve into a bucket of fear and anxiety, um, you know, and I can get them to the door and they say, I can't stay, I can't stay. But often what I'll do is say, why don't we just give you a, just walk through and have a look. And oftentimes it's just about playing the scene, seeing the environment um, and they'll come back. Um, sometimes they come in, in there and there for two days and they're starting to detoxing. Um, their physical symptoms become overwhelming for them um, and they just can't cope um, and they leave. So we have, a, we have what's called an exit plan. So an exit plan is we make sure if the person does leave, because it does happen, we've got a safe plan to get them home um, and a family member or a support person will come and actually pick them up from the unit. So we're not going to... If they say they want to go at 2 o'clock in the morning, living at Robertson, there is no bus... Um, you know, we would certainly not put them out in the middle of the night. But sometimes they do want to go straight away. But our staff are very skilled and we can de-escalate that situation, 
give them magic noodles if we need to. Um, you know, just try and support them over that. We can provide them with some, some specific medication to, you know, re reduce some of that anxiety. But it does happen. But what I'm finding is that they, once they have a go and they realise, yeah, I don't like my life like it is, this is really hard, I'm going to leave, but they come back because they think maybe I'm ready now to do that and they know that we are kind, we are not judgmental. We see them as we are, that we're not parents harassing them and saying, you know, you've got to stop taking drugs. We don't say that. We accept them how they are, warts and all. And sometimes they are messy when they come in. You know, they haven't had a shower, they haven't been to the dentist, they've got lots of medical problems because their focus is on drugs, not about their, their help, and that's what we can provide there. So it's a stepping stone. Sometimes they do flee. But I'm just finding that they just come back. Yeah. Lots of questions. Let's take a couple more then. Yes, in the uh, in the middle there, you're the couple sitting next to you. Um, what's if they don't have a family when you send them back? Where do they go? And Good. do you follow them? Yes. I mean, like, not physically. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. We don't stalk anybody. <laughs> not in a detective way, but... Uh, um, no, you're actually exactly right. So some people do have very fractured relationships with their family members. They've just worn them out. You know, they've stole money, they've stolen money for drugs and they've broken into houses and they've been violent and the families can't cope anymore. So sometimes the families will have ABOs out on these young people. Often they are homeless or they're couch surfing or sometimes their mental health gets the, the best of them. So we always make sure before they come into the facility that we have an exit plan for them. So we make sure that we've got someone or somewhere for them to go. So whether it's, um, you know, whether it's a refuge or something, we just don't go, right, I see you, off you go. And these, some of these people are 22, so they're adults, they're young adults, and we can't, and it's a voluntary unit, so we can't force them to stay. Even if we think that it's not safe for them to go, we would always support them to a safe de destination. Probably not what we'd like to do, but we have to accept what they are adults and they're making an adult choice. Mm. And sometimes that's hard, but we always make sure that they're safe. The aftercare program is, we also have an aftercare program, and they felt they will follow up to see, check in on how they're going, they'll have a phone call, do you want to come back? So we keep the beds open for 72 hours, because they might get, get out into society and think, oh, maybe I can go back, and they ring up and they say, yep, come on back, and they'll start again. So there are some options there. Time for a couple more. Yes, thanks, you. More of and an operational yes, question. Um, the facility looks great in that picture. I recall it's a couple of years old now. Um, how's it holding up? And uh, what's the next step for the next level of improvements to improve the uh, operations for the carers and the residents? I, th I think I have to share, we, do, we did have a leaking issue. Um, that was... I do laugh now, but it was a bit messy. Water was coming down the walls and we had a bucket... So it was like Chinese water torture when the, when the drip started coming into the bucket and I thought, this is going to freak the kids out. So we had to put a towel in the bottom of the bucket and we had to empty it quite quickly. That's probably the only thing that we've had. We've just had a couple of leaks. Everything's, everything's pretty good. Yeah. One more quick one. Yes, you with the But it's microphone. fixed. The leaks yes. are fixed now. Thank you. Um, I imagine there are a lot more kids in Australia with these issues. How do you not get overwhelmed with demand? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes when the kids ring, you know, the, the family member or the, the young person rings up and say, you know, I want to come, and you hear their story, and it's really hard, you know, you want to take them all. So I guess it, there's, you know, there's a number of factors. So there's certainly um, a risk factor for the staffing because some of these young people can be quite aggressive. They've had AVOs out. They've been in jail. Uh, not that that deters them, but it's about the level of safety and it's also about the level of care that we, we're able to provide. Sometimes they're on too much medication and we have to get them to do start with a medical detox where there's an intensive care unit. Often people, because often if they're heavy drug users, particularly with THC, um, they, can, they can fit and they can have heart attacks. So they end up in intensive care on a ventilator. So we are a remote re environment. So we live at, Ro you know, we're at Robertson. It's sometimes half an hour, 40 minutes before an ambulance comes. I mean, we have a, an AED machine, we have registered nurses, and we have a lot of clinical staff with skills that can manage it. So we've just got to make sure that we can provide the right type of care. And sometimes their care needs are too high for us or... Um, but we can also refer them to somewhere that's more suitable to their needs. It is hard um, to, to make that choice, but we've also got to look out what's the best, best thing for that person. Maybe our service isn't right for them. 
um, you know, if someone had too many, too many disabilities. We're on a farm, there's gravel, there's, you know, it's rocky. So, you know, you couldn't push someone in a wheelchair there. It it's, would be really, really difficult. So there's a, you know, there's a number of factors. There are, we get lots of requests, um, but we assess everybody individually. And if we can't provide a, a service for them, we will refer them on to someone else that can. Deb, fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing your work with us. That's Deb Moxie. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. Deb, well, look, you're right. Oh, I've got my things. Do I need to give you a hand, Deb? No, no, I've got this you can, now. You can, you can do stairs it's now? It's just the downstairs is the problem. The downstairs is the problem? Yeah. I can leaf in there. Oh, there you go. You've done well. Fantastic. Well done. Thanks, yes. Deb. Good on you. Excellent. On to our second speaker this evening. Tamara Smedley is a highly skilled youth worker with infectious enthusiasm and passion for helping young people overcome challenges and reach their full potential. Working at Triple Care Farm for the past 10 years, Tamara assists students as part of the vocational education and training team in residential rehabilitation. No days the same as Tamara works with the team to meet each young person where they're at, supporting them to obtain skills and achieve identified goals to get their lives back on track. Previously, Tamara spent eight years working with disadvantaged youth in the justice and community sectors, and she resides in the Illawarra with her young family. So would you welcome Tamara? Well done. Thank you. It's a Wednesday night and the doorbell rings. Standing in front of you are two police officers. They are there to inform you that your twin sister's body has just been found in a nearby creek. News of her sister's death was the start of Katie's journey to come to know the Triple Care Farm Residential Rehabilitation Program. Katie spent 12 weeks in our holistic program, life-changing, sorry, life-changing residential re rehabilitation program. What did we do exactly for Katie? We simply created a safe place for change, a place for young people who are struggling can come for respite, a place to work through their pain, a place to learn new skills, and most importantly, a place to gain or rebuild self-confidence and self-worth. Do you know how many young people access our residential rehabilitation program in 2019? Those that misuse illegal and legal substances. 100%, 100% of those young people did that. 93% of those young people also experienced mental health issues. And 55% of those young people thought about death, thought about taking their own life, thought that the world would be better off without them in it. Back to Katie. Katie was your typical girl next door, living on the south coast of New South Wales. She was 23 years old. She had a warm, bubbly, have we met before, before personality. Growing up in a supportive family, Katie worked at the local news agency and spent her weekends with friends. But her bond with her identical sister was something special. More than a sister, more than a friend, Emma was her alternative reflection of herself. Unfortunately, Emma's path was not as kind as Katie's. Emma developed complex mental health issues, misused substances, and had multiple psychiatric interventions and treatment episodes. Throughout all of this, Katie was there for Emma. As Emma's struggles deepened, Katie too began to struggle. Katie's light was beginning to fade. Katie distanced herself from her sister after a particular hospital admission, leaving Emma's calls going unanswered. Shortly after this, the family found out that Emma had discharged herself from hospital and a missing persons report was filed. Emma's body was finally located. She had lost consciousness while using substances and drowned in that local creek. Emma had lost her battle. After the death of her sister, how did Katie feel? Katie felt responsible. She crumbled under the weight of guilt. She quickly spiralled into a world of high-risk behaviour and substance misuse. Alcohol and benzos became of her part of her everyday life. Katie did not want to die, but she no longer wanted to feel. She became homeless. She entered into a domestic violence relationship where she was physically, sexually and mentally abused on a daily basis. 
the world as she knew eroded away. After spending almost an entire year unable to recall her last day sober, Katie had a light bulb moment. She suddenly wanted more of herself. Katie reached out for help and called the Triple Care Farm program. Katie spent two weeks in our withdrawal program before moving across to the Triple Care Farm residential rehabilitation program where change had officially begun. What does a resi rehab program look like? Programs are all different, but ours, ours is special. Ours is unique. How so? The Triple Care Farm Residential Rehabilitation Program is situated in the southern highlands of New South Wales. We're on 110 acres. It's a 12-week program catering for the needs of young people 16 to 24 who identify as having substance addiction. They come from all socioeconomic backgrounds and all walks of life. Many are unemployed and over 58% have experienced incarceration in their short lives where the average level of schooling completed is year nine. Our Resi Rehab program offers a holistic approach for care, where counselling, case management, vocational education and training, and weekend sport and rec is provided. Katie embraced all aspects of our program. It worked wonders for her. While Katie was often observed to be struggling in the educational components of the program, this in turn inspired her to pursue her studies and repair the sense of achievement she received from learning. With confidence in tow, Katie graduated the Resi Rehab Program and returned to her family home with a network of support. Now, two years later, Katie is living independently in Sydney, working part-time as she has just completed a Diploma of Community Services. Katie also volunteers at a local PCYC where she tutors young children. She spends most of her weekends hiking and she plays in a mixed weekly soccer tournament. So what impact can our residential program have on a vulnerable young person just like Katie? It is here that they begin to heal, to participate in individual or group counselling, to re-engage in education, to find math actually fun or simply be comfortable in an education setting, to learn basic numeracy and literacy skills, to learn to drive the tractor, the forklift, or heck, even pull out fireweed in one of our paddocks, to learn basic skills of living independently, how to clean a toilet, how to cook a nutritionist meal, all within a budget and even engage in one of our many accredited training courses that we offer, such as a barista certificate. The opportunity to gain real life practical skills, to enrol and complete an accredited training course, to work through their pain and suffering can honestly be life changing for these young people. How can you help change the path and well-being of a young person like Katie? Every $500 pledged this evening creates an opportunity for a young person in the Resi Rehab Program to enrol and work towards completing a Certificate two in Work Skills and Vocational Pathways, a course that can help them into further education or gain employment. And $1,000 will go towards giving a young person the basic numeracy and literacy skills, which is critical to their development and self-worth. Katie has told me that she feels privileged to now be using the skills that she learned in the education program to help others. She often says to me, if we didn't go back to basics, doing times tables, there's no way I could have done this. I simply would not have had the confidence. As I mentioned previously, $500 can put one young person through the Certificate two in Work Skills and Vocational Pathways course. $1,000 can go towards critical numeracy and literacy skills, and $30,000 can put five young people through that same Cert II course. By your generosity here tonight, you can help create a safe place for change. You can help another Katie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Excellent. You. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Deb was describing that the, a Katie will arrive, a child will arrive, 
they've got a detox, and then there's all the mental health issues yeah. that'll go with that. So how do you deal with that aspect? You were talking a lot about the education, the positive stuff yeah. that happens. What happens at night when the, the mental health stuff comes on? So I guess um, at night we obviously, as the withdrawal program, we do have trained, qualified staff. It's about working with the individual young person. So we are a holistic program, and that's the beautiful thing about Triple Care Farm is that we work with the young person directly with what their needs are. We have a set structured program, but we can tweak it basically on that young person's needs. And we do have the support of the staff at the withdrawal program to be able to assist with any medical if required. Mm. But it, like to me, I'm struck by the complexity of that, but like it, how, how big that range would be. Yeah, it's, yeah, when you say a bit of tweaking, it's yeah. it's more than that, isn't it? We're yeah. very good at tweaking. Very good tweaking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's it's definitely it's a holistic team. We work together. We work closely, and it's all about coming back to what that young person needs. Um, we have very skilled staff that are able to identify any certain needs or extra care that is required that we can put in place at the start. And if something does come up, up I guess it's something that we just roll with. Um, we've been around for a long time. We kind of know what we're doing and we're constantly learning to improve our service and delivery. Right, right. How long might they be in the rehab part? So in our um, residential rehab program, we offer 12 weeks. Um, most of our young people stay for 12 weeks or they might look at graduating a week or two earlier depending on their own needs. Um, often they will graduate those couple of weeks early if they are re-engaging in educational training or employment opportunities. Right. And can they stay longer if, if, if needs? Um, we generally have a rule around the 14 week um, is maximum. Right. Um, however, once again, we can tweak it if, if required. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. What would you like to know about Tamara's program, about the uh, rehabilitation? Raise a hand and we'll get a microphone to you right at the back there. Thank you. Hi. Great work. Thank you. Um, how many... Um, you know, young people do you have in the facility or at Triple Care at any time? How yep. many of you are there? And what's um, your biggest challenge, do you think? Yeah, so um, our the Resi Rehab, we have 19 beds. Um, normally at one time we sit around the 16, 17 mark. Obviously, again, it depends on the detox flow. Um, we are a rolling intake. So basically, as soon as one person graduates, or if they do choose a voluntary exit the program, we fill that spot straight away. In terms of staff, I think we're about a team of, across the whole um, three programs, I think we're about 60, yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, so we're very lucky. In terms of my team, we have five on my team. Right. Um, the biggest challenge is, I guess, providing the care that each of the young people need. Um, in saying that we are very good at doing that, um, it's just about using our networks and remembering that there are other services available. So once again, if we're not the right service, we might need to refer out or get a specialist in that we can do that. I'm assuming people have to do the withdrawal before they come to York, or can they come from elsewhere? No, um, so they do have to do detox prior to coming to Resi Rehab. Yeah. Right. Yeah, at at um, Triple Care. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Yes, what else? Uh, in the middle there. You can get a mic up there. Thank you. Hi, thanks. It's very inspiring. And um, on the one hand, it's easy just to donate and put a sum of money towards you. But I'm interested in the rehab of those young people. For example, I run a company and have an internship program. Um, can I say that if, if I was to give one of those or plenty of those children or young people an opportunity to then go into the workforce, um, how much care is needed in, in doing that? Um, and would they be supported to go into an employment opportunity from there? We, we, I have an internship program. We've put about 800 kids through, I graduates through a program over yeah. 15 mm. years. I'm interested in opening an opportunity for your organisation and interested in in what that looks like. Thank you, that's awesome. Um, I guess a part of my role as the education trainer is to support the young people um, while they're at the farm to prepare for when they leave. So a big part of my role is actually linking them in with education and further training. A lot of my time is actually spent job seeking, doing resumes, um, getting ready to how to prepare for an interview. The good thing about us is that our final stage of our program is our aftercare program. So when a student graduates our program, the Resi Rehab, they move into a, the next and final stage, which is the aftercare program. 
And that program, we have workers that are able to support those young people while they're out in the community. So that could be anything, getting them ready for applying for jobs or following up with any um, uh, appointments that they have. Um, but they're very well supported. The other thing that we try and do is link them in already into their community um, with different support agencies. So at any time, there is an opportunity for a young person to get support from our staff once they're in the community if needed. Mm. Ellie is going to be talking about the aftercare yeah. program next, so you'll get some more details on that. And the other great thing about a night like this is it's it's really intimate. You can go and talk to everybody afterwards. You can talk to the you know, you know people from the David Martin Foundation about that kind of request exactly. You know, like we'll all be here, we'll all be hanging around afterwards. So it's uh, you know you'll have that opportunity to get in and and uh, you know see what can be done that sort of stuff. But fantastic <laughs> offer, and thank you so much. Yes, any uh, further queries? Yes, can we get a mic over there? We heard a bit of the um, the one-on-one -on -one, uh, help that the, uh, the the clients get uh, at night when they they need issues to be sorted out and addressed there. And then, what what are some of the programs during the day that they attend? We saw the photo earlier, for example, of them sitting in a sort of a classroom type situation. So, what do, what does that look like? Yep. So that cl that classroom that's actually my space that I work out of as the education trainer. A part of the vocational education team, which I'm a part of, um, we offer a woodwork program, we offer a metalwork program, we also, and a part of that, we do accredited training such as the forklift license, white card, the certificate to in work skills of vocational pathways. We also have a living skills trainer who does everything from, you know, teaching the students how to cook and clean, make a bed, make sure their own personal health is okay. Um, and we also have a music program as well where we have a full-on music studio where the young people can record, they can write lyrics, um, they can also learn an instrument as well. Fantastic. Um, we will have to move on to uh, hear more about the aftercare program. So thanks so much for those questions and thanks to Tamara. Thank Good you. Tamara. Thank you. Tamara Smedley. Our final speaker tonight is Ellie Reinhardt. She's a young woman who's passionate about raising awareness of the complex issues surrounding youth, drug and alcohol addiction and mental illness. As a graduate of the Triple Care Farm back in 2018, Ellie brings invaluable lived experience to her role as Sir David Martin Foundation's Youth Ambassador and is also a member of their Youth Advisory Group. Ellie is currently in her first year of a forensic science degree and recently won the 2022, was it 2022, 2021? <laughs> Couldn't be, could it? Uh, 2021, wrong glasses, New South Wales Young Achiever Award in the health and wellbeing category. So tonight, Ellie's gonna share her experience in the aftercare program, which offers each young person one-on-one -on -one support back in the community for six months after they leave the farm. Would you welcome Ellie? Uh, I'm 23 and uh, you're looking at a recovering drug addict. Um, as you would know, uh, addiction brought on many scary challenges. Um, and what were mine? Um, well, when growing up, um, I was exposed to my mother's um, addiction and her mental health issues around schizophrenia. Um, which resulted in her being institutionalised. Um, but apart from the fragmented and um, dysfunctional family dynamic on my mother's side, um, I, you know, I um, was facing issues that are difficult um, amongst many young people. So, um, for example, trying to fit in, um, caving into peer pressure and also um, social anxiety, which I still battle with today. Um, so at the age of 14, I started using um, drugs and alcohol to cope with these difficulties. Um, but by the time I was 17, I was relying heavily on um, drugs and alcohol to function on a daily. Um, and exactly what did this look like? I couldn't talk to people. Um, I was angry. Um, I remember at times I was on my hands and knees um, scavenging through the carpet for crystal meth. Um, anything to numb the strong and destructive feelings um, that I was facing. But it just got worse. Um, my life was completely unmanageable. 
um, which is why I turned to drugs and alcohol for comfort. Um, but once I started, you know, I found it very difficult to come back from that um, because I didn't feel like my life would amount to anything. Um, long story short, um, I hit rock bottom. For me, that was a psychosis um, that was very scary. I was desperate. Um, I reached out to a psychologist who referred me to Jarra House, um, which is a four-month uh, rehabilitation program for um, women of all ages and backgrounds. So that was a bit difficult, um, you know, having the age gap, not being able to connect with other young people. Um, so they referred me to Triple Care Farm, and Triple Care Farm rescued me. Um, how? Like, there were so many ways, um, but I feel like the most important part for me was the caring and authentic support. Um, you know, they, they kept me motivated. Um, I was busy in the rehabilitation sort of program um, and all the different sections. They, they just instilled in me a sense of hope, um, self-discovery, confidence, motivation. Um, and there I met my aftercare worker, Linda. Um, so she formulated um, a plan of action for when I left Triple Care Farm. So this involves things like accommodation, um, a day program for when you leave, um, you know, supports, education. Um, there's a financial aspect. Um, yeah. And then I left. Um, I left Triple Care Farm. Uh, and what exactly did this feel like? Um, like I would describe it as like all my stomach constituents just like dropping. I remember like the last, the last thing I remember is I was literally holding onto the pole because I didn't want to leave. Um, and, you know, leaving was difficult, but um, it was also that real moment of impact or the catalyst to, um, you know, for all the opportunities that opened up for me. Um, yeah, it was getting back out there into the community um, and applying all the tools that I learned in the, the program to the real world. Um, and this was possible because I had learnt these tools um, at Triple Care Farm to propel myself into action. Um, and I had my sidekick, Linda. So she, for six months, she was my lifeline. Uh, she was my counsellor, my life coach, um, my GPS. Um, so, you know, leaving Triple Care Farm, I struggled with the basics like catching public transport. So I would just call Linda up and she would help me navigate. Um, yeah, uh, and to be honest, I don't think that I would be clean and sober today if it wasn't for the aftercare program. program. It, it was such a critical time. Um, and today I am studying um, the Bachelor of Forensic Science. I am an ambassador for Sir Dave Martin Foundation and involved in uh, community and volunteer projects. Um, and I am five years off drugs, um, which is just amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I've learned that life without drugs is wonderful and, you know, worth living. Um, so, yeah, that's my, my story of rescue. Um, sorry. <laughs> there's more. There's more. <laughs> um, so you, you can help rescue addicts like myself um, through your generosity. $250 uh, can provide two weeks of aftercare for another young recovering addict like myself. Um, I gotta say those first two weeks are the toughest um, and having that opportunity with Linda was an absolute critical time um, for me. Uh, $4,000 tonight will provide the whole six months of one-on-one -on -one support um, for that young person to transition safely back into the community. And if we can get to $40,000, 
Uh, this will cover 10 young individuals with six months of aftercare, enabling them to um, you know, access all the supports that they need to propel themselves into the community. With your support, you can help change lives. <laughs> Thank you. Hey. Come on, Ellie. That's good. Fantastic. Fantastic. I mean, I'm, I'm struck, and you know, this, this has been coming through with all the stories, and then with yours in particular, how interrupted your life is. Do you know what I mean? Mm. In that period of, say, you know, 14 to when you turn up at uh, a triple care farm. You know, like yeah. all the stuff that, all the normal things that, that if that's not your life course, you might learn and the socialisation and all that sort of stuff. So yeah. then it, it's such a hurdle, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, yeah what do you I remember of that sort of thing that was so difficult to get to just on the microphone there? Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> What was the most difficult? Part? Yeah, what were the sort of things that you know you just you suddenly realised? Like you said, you know, public transport. You don't you don't really know how to do it as such. I can't even put it into words. Like, I I didn't know what I was doing. I was literally I would refer to myself as a potato. Um, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I. You know, the most difficult thing um, for me, and because I, I, I knew I wanted help, um, was asking for it and uh, talking to people, um, you know, because having that connection is so important. Um, you know, yeah. looking at people in the eyes, shaking hands, you know, all those, all those yeah. things, very difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I imagine, and you were saying, like, that, that six months or so, there's moments when you could, you could have gone, you could have relapsed, right? Oh, yes, and I did. Yeah, yeah. I did. did. And I think it's very common. Um, but, you know, that's why it's so important to have the right supports and the most important, uh, the best thing that I've ever done is create boundaries and cut off ties with, you know, people that weren't good for me. Yeah. Um, so you, you pick yourself up and, yeah. Yeah, it, it and that amazing relationship you described with Linda. Oh, I mean, yes, yeah. yes. That must be extraordinary. Yes, it was good. <laughs> it was amazing. She was amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, she helped me so much. Um, I preferred um, seeing her face to face, but um, it's not one size fits all. So um, obviously some people prefer to talk over the phone and that's fine. It's whatever, yeah. whatever suits that young yeah. person. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to know uh, about the aftercare program or... Ellie, Ellie may not be able to answer everything. Tell yeah. the technical details about aftercare. Anything else? Yeah. Yes, Julie. James, not a, a question, but we have a beautiful comment from Sue Heisman online who says, you're so inspiring, Ellie. Your strength, bravery and ability to share with That's such an open heart is super impressive. That's Much beautiful. love and luck to you. I know you'll go from strength to strength. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, in some ways, we are a little uh, limited to, for time, and I think, in a sense, your story encapsulates the whole thing. If you're a result of it, it's working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ellie Whitehead. <laughs> okay. See, incredible stories, right? You know, it's the storytelling. It's that, that that brings the impact about the work that they're doing, brings it to life, makes us realise the kind of things that they're achieving, and we hear very clearly what it is they need. Incredible people making a real difference in the lives of people like Ellie and all the rest. If you'd like to get your applause together, the pres presenter's going to leave now and they have, probably have a much relieved cup of tea. Um, off you go. Thank you so much to Deb, to Tamara, and to Ellie. We're going to start the pledging session. We'll bring them back at the uh, end to see what we've done and what we've achieved in here this afternoon. Now, the waiters are going to go around and uh, top up your drinks as well. And uh, I encourage you, perhaps if you're watching at home, you might like to have a quick, you know, stretch, um, you know, put on another episode of Bluey for the kids so you can concentrate here, whatever you need, because this is the best part of the night. This is, this is where the action happens, right? The pledging, here's how it's going to work. We're going to invite an advocate for each program to come up and tell you why they support the Sir David Mountain Foundation, and to kick off the pledging. Then we open it up to you. Now, if you're in the room, please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone onto you, and then you can call out your name and the amount that you'd like to pledge. 
You've all got a pledge card at your seat. You've got one on the way in, I think. So you can write down whatever it is that you pledge. You keep the bottom section as a reminder and then uh, hand in the top section as you go uh, this evening. If you're part of our online audience, then please enter your name and amount that you want to pledge into the chat box. Julie, who's the CEO of the Funding Network over there, will read it out during the room. And we'll post a mobile number there if, so you can text anonymously if you, uh, if you prefer. We'll go through each program in the same order that they, presented, they were presented, so please save your pledge until we're collecting for that program. We'll go through all three. And then we also go through and make a, a second round of, of pledges. So if you want to sort of see how it pans out and then you know, offer something at the end, that's great uh, too. Of course, all pledges are tax deductible. Pledges start from $100, but if you want to float the company and donate that as well, that's fine too, okay? It's end of financial year, remember? So uh, good to get your donations in. Uh, we'll see some of the, um, you know, it, it, if you want to make your donation privately, that's absolutely fine, but in some way it misses the point. Um, it misses the point of tonight where we're great believers in public giving. We believe you should say it out loud that you're giving and you're supporting. The more you say it, the more others give. We can only, you know, we can only mimic the behaviour that we see. We can only model ourselves on behaviour that we see. So we're very big believers that you put your hand up and say $1,000, you know, it makes a huge difference and a huge difference to everybody's life and a huge difference to everyone's sense of generosity. We do understand if, like me, you come from a very stitched up Anglo-Saxon, Anglican background and that's all a bit embarrassing. We understand that. So if you want to do that, that's fine. You can donate anonymously. But, you know, give it a shot. Give it, if you've never done something like this, give it a shot. It feels good and it helps others to feel good and uh, encourages the generosity of the room. Can I get a big round of applause and thanks to Investor and NextGen.net. They have provided a total of $30,000 in matched funding tonight. And Fantastic. Want to give Thank you so much to them. That means if you get in early, your $100 becomes $200 straight away because of Investor and NextGen.net. So absolutely terrific. All right, we're going to get started with Deb Moxley's withdrawal program. I'm sure we're all clear on how this works. It's pretty straightforward. Their advocate is Anna Beaumont. Anna, if you're with us, come on up and uh, tell us why you like the Foundation Triple Care Fund. Take it away, Anna. Thank you, James, and thank you for your help tonight. I feel passionate about David Martin Place Withdrawal Program because David Martin was my father. Before this youth-focused, purpose-built program was built, young people had nowhere safe and appropriate to detox from drugs and alcohol. David Martin Place Withdrawal Program wouldn't have been possible without the philanthropy, without the generosity and commitment of our donors, the David Martin Foundation donors. They raised, they, we all raised the first million dollars and got the project off the ground. Our family foundation is proud and delighted, I know mum would like me to say delighted, <laughs> to support David Martin Place Withdrawal Program and the work done there by the staff and by the young people themselves. I'd like to make the first pledge of $500. Back Fantastic. to you, James. Thank you, Anna. Fantastic. Thank you so much. <laughs> Anna Beaumont here. I'm delighted with your $500, Anna, and my mother loves the word delighted as well, so might be very civil, I think. I'm going to come down here and act a little bit like a crazed Ellen DeGeneres meets Jerry Springer sort of type and wander the room and, and seek, your, uh, seek your pledges. So if anybody else would like to join and join Anna and pledge some money for the withdrawal program, yes. My name is Shanna Hennessy and I'm delighted to match Anna's 500 as well. Fantastic. Thank you, Shanna. Excellent. Can I just say that was an exemplary pledge. That. That was perfect. Clear, into the microphone, just beautiful. So hand up if you'd like to give, right up the back there. Let's get a mic up on there and uh, thank you so much already for, uh, for helping out. Stick your hands up and then we can get mics onto you and we know where you are. Yes. Hi, I'm Natasha Nankerville and my husband John Flavelle and I would like to give $2,000 to the withdrawal program. Thank you, Natasha. Fantastic. $2,000 there. Beautiful. Absolutely wonderful. Yes, sir. What would you like? We'll, oh, look, you're going to get your steps up tonight, aren't you? It's going to be terrific for you. Yeah, I'll also give $2,000 to the Royal Program. And your name is? Trevor Lowenson. Thank you, Trevor. Fantastic. Good on you. Another $2,000 there. Very, very generous. And thank you. Yes, over here. I've got a, there you go. Well, I'll go to you first. You've got the microphone. There you go. Yep, that's good. I wanted David to go first, but never you mind. You want David to go first? <laughs> Let's get David to go first. Yes, David. What would you like? Thank you, James. Um, 
David and Saskia Lowe would also like to donate a thousand dollars to the withdrawal program. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, David and Saskia. Yes, now you wanted him to go first. Why? Long story. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Michael and Sally would love to donate a thousand dollars as well. Thank you, Michael and Sally. Fantastic, excellent. I'll dive a mic in here too. Yep. Yeah, Brian would like to donate a thousand dollars. Thank you, Brian. Good on you. Next we will give it. And Rob will do another thousand. And Shubra and Pierce will give another thousand. Fantastic. Very, very good. Excellent. Yes, I'll come up to you, Helen. Hello. Thanks, James. I have another uh, pledge from NextGen from $1,500 just to break the 1,000 cycle. Fantastic. Thank you so much. NextGen throwing in there. I'll pass the mic along then. Off you go. And I might continue on with that um, from the Mead family, $2,000. Thank, Thank you for that. Absolutely uh, terrific. We got anything back. online yet? Yeah, yeah, up the back. Yeah, yeah. Hello, yes. Yes, uh, Andrew Sharp, and on behalf of the Sharp family, I'd like to, uh, again, uh, give the $2,000. $2,000. Thank you so much, the Sharp family. Good on you, Andrew. Thank you. Very, very good. Anything online there, Julie? We do. Coming in fast and furious, we have uh, $200 from Sandy and Vince Di Pietro. Hope I've said that right. Thank you, Sandy and Vince. And Jess has donated $500, and the name is not showing. Uh, we have... Uh, Jacqueline Hull has donated $500. Fantastic. Thank you to them. Big line, big applause for it at home. Thank you. Very, very good. Yes, down the front, Will. Uh, James, I do some work with some Navy ships, and I'm here right now representing HMAS Supply, who would like to donate $600 to the withdrawal program. Thank you. Thank you, HMAS Supply. Excellent. Wonderful. Yes, just, you might like to just call it out because we might... Um, but off you go, yes. Uh, um, the Shanahan family would like to donate $1,000. Thank you, Shanahan family. Yes, very, very good. Good on you. Yes, down the front here, yes. Heather Webster. Uh, the name on the room in the withdrawal program was Rob Maple Brown. And Rob's not here. So I think we need to donate $5,000 in memory of Rob. Thanks so much for that. That's lovely. In memory of Rob, $5,000. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. That's gorgeous. Thank you for that. That's absolutely wonderful. Yes, anything further? As I said, we do a little, we do another round just at the end, so we can come back around and you can, you know, you might want to just see how the night pans out. That's all, that's absolutely fine. But anything else we go? Yes, Anna. Thank you. I was given a pledge by Robert and Libby Albert for three thousand dollars for the withdrawal program. Thank you so much to them. Excellent. Marvelous. All right. Are we happy at this point? Okay, okay. It's pretty good. $36,000 so far, ladies and gentlemen. It's not bad. <laughs> very, very good for the withdrawal program. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Excellent pledging. You're getting into the spirit of it, aren't you? See? It's good. It's good. Let's move on to the rehabilitation program. Their advocate uh, tonight is Rob Woods. Rob, you with us? Yep. Come on up, Rob. <laughs> Tell us what you like about it. Uh, hi everyone, um, so I'm Rob Woods, I'm a governor of the Sir David Martin Foundation. Uh, my wife Jane and myself, we've been giving to the uh, foundation for the last 25 years or so. Um, we love it because it works. Um, it costs a bit more than some of the other programs, but it's safe, it's secure, it's 12 weeks, not three or four. It, it, um, it teaches kids how to, it gives them education, it gives them some licenses to drive forklifts, things like that. So it, it takes a bit longer, but it works and the results are outstanding. So, um, so I'm, I'm very proud to be part of it and I'd like to start the bidding with $500 to, um, to uh, support this important part of the foundation. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, Rob. Excellent. There's the max funding from, from NextGen. Right over the back there in the far corner, yes. Hi, Natasha and John for two thousand dollars. Natasha and John for two thousand. Excellent. And uh, yell yours out in the corner there. I missed your name. Thank you, Margaret. Five hundred there from Margaret. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, uh, James and Kirsty. We'll uh, put us down for a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. Thank you, James and Kirsty. Excellent. And next door, Trevor. Tre Trevor. Two thousand. Two thousand from Trevor again. Fantastic. Behind, uh, yes, in front there. Hi, Renee. No, I'll give a thousand. Thank you. Thousand. Thank you, Renee. And behind Trevor there, there was one as well. Yeah. Uh, the Davies family for one thousand. Thank you. Thank you, Dave, for uh, one thousand. There, very, very good. Over on the side here. Yeah. Low so family for a thousand. Thank you. 
And so your name will be low, low. The Low Family. Thank you, The Low Family. Thank you so much. Sorry, next year. Yeah. Sophie Ward, five hundred dollars to the rehabilitation. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Very, very good. Excellent. Yes. Uh, Brian for a thousand. Thank you, Brian, for a thousand. And I've got a pledge from Damien Roach, who couldn't make it tonight, for $2,000. $2,000 with Damien Roach. Thank you, Damien. Excellent. And Jane and, uh, and I will give another 1000 as well. Thanks. Oh, thank you so much, Sir Rob. Another 1000 there from uh, Rob and Jane. Yes, over here. So, uh, the Gupta family, another 1000 thanks. Gupta family, another 1000 Thank you so much. Excellent. Over on side, yes? Uh, Shanna Hennessy, another 1000 Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Another 1000 Fantastic. Big round of applause for people so far. This is good. Doing very, very well. Yes, uh, mine was Cottage family for a thousand. Thank Cottage you. Family for a thousand. Thank you so much. Excellent. Very generous families everywhere. Hello there, Will. You got some more sailors? Uh, more generous sailors? <laughs> sailors are very generous people, don't you know that? Uh, no, this is another governor on the board, Shah Rasiti, who would like to pledge twenty five hundred dollars to the rehabilitation program. Yes. Uh, Eva Rigby, I'd like to give five hundred. Thank you so much, Eva. Thank you. Good on you. Fantastic. Lovely. Excellent. Uh, yes, Helen. I've got two. Can you hear me? Yeah, just talk. Look, come on. I've got two to make. One I'd like from Archie from Rigby's, because she's my daughter, and, and so it's 500. Thank you. And I'd also like to do a proxy for Next Gen for another $1,500. Proxy for Next Gen for another $1,500. Thank you so much for them. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes, me now, is it? Oh, hello. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. I'm Paul. I just wanted I, I wanted to say something actually um, a bit different in that I had a godson who got into some serious problems with drugs about eight years ago. And I reached out to the David Martin Foundation then for materials to help, <coughs> materials to help me navigate through that, which was exceptionally helpful. And so I've kind of constantly received your information ever since. But... Um, um, and so it was a kind of strange to be invited today and to have the recollection of that help at the time. And, yeah. And so anyway, we'll pledge, um, my wife and I, Catherine and Paul Evans, $5,000. Catherine and Paul Evans, $5,000. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, they've helped so many people across the state, I'm sure, and so many will have those stories. Yes, um, Andrew. The Sharp family would like to pledge another $2,000 to Rehabilitation. Thank you, the Sharp family. I'd like to say that I've got three lovely daughters who are getting towards the end of their adolescence, and each of them will come down to a triple care farm graduation. And that's been such an eye opener for them, and it's been wonderful. And I'm encouraging anyone in the room who hasn't been to a triple care farm graduation to come and see. All of the graduates there at the end of the program. Yeah. It was truly remarkable. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Thank you for that. Excellent. Thanks for your generous donation. Yes, uh, on the side there, just, uh, uh, just behind um, Evie there. There you go. Um, hi, the Renwood family would like to pledge $2,000, please. Thank you, Renwood family. That's fantastic. Thank you. Very generous. Yes, sir. Uh, Stephen and Catherine May, another 2000 Thank Stephen you. Stephen and Catherine another 2000 Thank you. Excellent. Wonderful. And uh, Julie, yes, online. Um, online, we have Deborah and David Gooden pledged two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars for rehabilitation from Sandy and Vince, and that well, there was one other. And Jess Parker has pledged five hundred dollars. Thank you, thank thanks. You Good. Excellent. Thank you, online. Beautiful. Big round of applause, everyone. Yay! Wonderful. Yes, uh, Anna. And uh, Robert and Libby Albert would like to pledge two thousand dollars to the rehab program. Fantastic. Wonderful. All righty. We're looking at $43,000 for the rehab program. That's absolutely wonderful. We'll do the same thing. We'll leave it there for the time being. But uh, as I said, there'll be a little roundup at the end if you uh, feel like helping a little more. So let's see what we can raise for the aftercare program. This is where we heard from, from Ellie Reinhardt, extraordinary young woman. So let's hear from their advocate, Saskia Lowe. Yes, Saskia. I am bringing it home for aftercare, so I hope there's some money left, guys. Um, I am a new member of the Sir David Martin family, and I very much feel like I am. I am a passionate supporter of aftercare, and I think Ellie's story is just remarkable. I've cried already five times tonight. Um, and I think it's the thousands of little conversations that happen after this that goes such a long way. 
So I ask you all, I urge you all tonight to support the day-to-day -day connections that happen over the six-month period um, that really make a difference. And I think pave the way to a really, which we've seen, a really positive and purposeful life such as Ellie's. So I'm going to start the pledge with $500 to pay for two weeks of one-on-one -on -one care for someone coming out of the program. And I'd like you to open your hearts and your minds and your wallets once more tonight. Um, and thank you very much. Yep. Fantastic. Thank you, Saskia. <laughs> Wonderful. And there's a hand up already. Very eager. Yes, your name? For $1,000. Nat and Brad for $1,000. Thank, thank you. you. Big round of applause for the first one. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, James and Kirsty, uh, $2,000. James and Kirsty, $2,000. Thank you. Wonderful. Trevor. I'll do $2,000. 2000 from Trevor again. Thank you, Trevor. Absolutely wonderful. Yes. Hi, the Shanahan family for $1,000. Shanahan family for $1,000. Thank yeah. you, Shanahan's. Yes, uh, Shannon. And, sorry. Oh, you, know, <laughs> <laughs> you know my name now. Another $1,000. Thank you. Another $1,000. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, so just behind there, there's a couple in the, in the corner there, in the left there, yeah. Uh, the, Reynolds, the Reynolds family will do $1,000 too. Reynolds family, $1,000. And behind the Reynolds family? Uh, Jason and Hattie Millett, uh, $2,000. Thank you, Jason and Hattie. Fantastic, $2,000. Right at the back there. Yes, Margaret, was it? Margaret's able, $500. Thank you, Margaret. Excellent. And uh, going along next to you, you there, uh, Natasha, was it? Another 2000 from Natasha at the back there. Thank you so much. Yes, in the red. Hi, could I um, support with 500 but could I support Aoife and Helen, who are my neighbours, um, to put my PR agency $3,000 of PR support towards the foundation and also perhaps my staff and me to be that aftercare service to be able to come down and support with... Uh, people and humans and an online service to be able to transfer them into a workforce scenario. Yep. So that's beautiful. Thank you so much. So we'll take the the 500 donation into this amount, but thank you for your pledging of 2000 of PR as a as a separate thing. And there is also again we'll give you an opportunity of ways to connect in other ways uh, towards the end there. But over the back there, yes. Andrew. Yep, the Sharp family would like to give uh, one person six months at $4,000. One person six months at $4,000. That's fantastic. Thank you. I mean, when you put it like that, it's, it's small amounts really, isn't it? It's $4,000, you know, and that's one person for six months. Yes, Michael. Uh, Kotovic for 2000 for aftercare. Kotovic for 2000 Fantastic. Saskia so does a great job. Yes. Low family for 1000 Thank you. Low family for 1000 Thank you. Yep. Uh, the Galea family for 2000 Galea family for 2000 Thank you so much. Actually, wonderful. Yes, sir. Stephen and Catherine May, 2000 Stephen and Catherine May, 2000 Thank you. That's very good. Thank you. Uh, Robin Chain Woods, um, 4000 Robin Chain Woods, 4000 Thank you so much. 4000 That's six months. That's somebody taken care of right there. You saw what six months can do. It's incredible. Yes. Hi. I'd like to do another $4,000 as well. Thanks. And your name is? Anna. Thank you, Anna. Another 4000 from Anna. Good on you. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. My name is Shubra. Shubra and Piyush Gupta, 2000, please. The Gupta family, 2000. Thank Thanks you so sir. much. Absolutely wonderful. Yes, are you raising a hand there or are you looking for that? No. Yes, sir. Yep. Brian for 1000. Brian for 1000. Yes, you're all used to Sydney auctions, aren't you? You don't sort of. <laughs> Suddenly you just bought $4 million a house. You didn't even know. James, another one from Next Gen, $2000. Thank you, Max and Jan. $2,000 there. Fantastic. Julie, what have we got online? We have uh, the lovely Jess Parker has donated another $500. David and Deborah Goodin, another $300. And Lanny Rigby has a challenge. She will donate $300 if her mum, Helen Keneally, matches us. Yay. Okay. So, done. done. Fantastic. Uh, the match is right there. And... And oh, the other sister, yes? I, c I can't not match her, so I'll do another 300. Do another 300, there you go. Family. Okay. And one final from Sandy and Vince, another $500. Thank you, Sandy and Vince. Uh, fantastic. Thank you, online. Beautiful. Well done. Yes, uh, Will. James, I've got a bit of a triple thing here. Firstly, HMAS Supply, again, for $600. Thank you, HMAS Supply. Ashar Rasiti, governor on the board, for 1500 and Will and Helen Martin will pledge uh, $500 here if it's matched by at least one man in the room who's travelled with me to Tasmania to play golf. 
<laughs> it's a pretty, it's a narrow, it's a very narrow pledge, Will. I mean, are you sure there's anybody here that fits that description? Yeah, you, sir. Rob McEwen, five hundred dollars. Who who won that weekend? Golf. Golf was the winner. Golf was the winner. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I play tennis every Tuesday, and tennis wins every time. That's that's for sure. I've played golf with Will again as well. I'll, I'll donate a thousand, Peter Ward. A thousand dollars. Thank you, Peter Ward. Fantastic. Excellent. Wonderful. Anything more that you'd like to give for this uh, marvelous aftercare? Yes, uh, Natasha. Bye. I'd just like to give $200 because you can't kind of leave yes. it at that odd number. Yes. That's just... Oh, it's awkward, isn't it? It's awkward, isn't it? You're quite right. Another 200 to make it 54. Does anybody prefer to work in multiples of 60, for example, which uh, you're more comfortable with? But, yeah, we'll leave that as it is. That's, that, that's fantastic. All right, wonderful. That's uh, absolutely terrific. Good on you. Yes, uh, Anna. This will surprise you, but it's the Alberts again. So $2,000 for aftercare. Thank you. Family, fantastic. Excellent, we're looking at $56,000. Absolutely wonderful. So that is pretty amazing. That is very, very good, and thank you for your extraordinary generosity. Now, what we'll do is just a quick run around, because sometimes people just like to wait to the end and see what's happened. Uh, let's look at the uh, total amounts. So let's start with withdrawal again. 36300 there. Anybody got anything further that they'd like, like to give uh, and to help out there with that... Uh, Extraordinary program there with Deb's excellent work. Yes, Anna. Uh, the Beaumont family would like to pledge $1,000 to withdrawal. Thank you, Beaumont family. Good on you. Fantastic. Thank you, Anna. Excellent. Another 1000 there. Anything further that you'd, uh, that you'd like to help out? You know, you've been extraordinarily generous so far, so it's just like it's a, it's a thing that often happens where some people just sort of go, okay, now that it's that... I want to see what's going on. Julie? Um, not from online, but it's only 13 days to the end of the financial year. Just putting yes. it out there. So I'll donate $100 if somebody else who's Irish matches me. Okay. Uh -oh. Helen, the Irish. Yes, sir. Sorry, your name again was? Shanahan, Shanahan family. Yeah. Yes. Or anyone with an Irish surname. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, fantastic. Anything more for rehabilitation? 45,000, yes. We're Hennessy, so we have to go with the Irish. Oh, well. another 100 from the Hennessy's as well. Thank you, Hennessy's. Fantastic. Um, yes, anything more for uh, rehabilitation? 45,500, yes, Will. Oh, you withdraw, how much? Uh, well, this, again, this is Shah Rasidi, 1,000. Uh, but while we're here, HMAS supply 500 for rehabilitation. And uh, Helen and Will Martin uh, in withdrawal for uh, 500. Thank you so much. Thank you, Will. Thank you, HMAS Supply, for all of your generosity there. And anything for so rehabilitation we were looking at as well, 46,000 there. Absolutely wonderful. Nothing more. Terrific. All righty. What about the front? Uh, in the front row. Oh, right in the front. Oh, sorry, there. <laughs> this is uh, Lady Martin. I've just told my son he's not meant to withdraw, he's meant to give. <laughs> That's the whole point. Yes. Um, while I'm here, I would just like to thank you all for attending tonight, for showing your support. Since 1990, we have raised so much money for kids and children in need, uh, sent them on the road to success, got them off the road of failure. Triple Care Farm has been a great success. You have all been contributors towards their success and we are not I'm not allowed to say the word proud so we are delighted <laughs> to know that so many children kids in need have been sent on the road to success and a new life ahead of them and we've kept in touch with so many of them um, and they they made the most of the advantage that was presented to them so it's all because of your success, or our success, your um, generosity and care and love for the young people coming up in Australia. So thank you. I'm very emotional. Thank you. <laughs> thank you all very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marvis. Helen. Yes, Helen. Oh, sorry. Okay, uh, another $1,000 to match Wood's family donation. To aftercare? 
to rehabilitation. The rehabilitation. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Uh, someone yes. online, Julie? James. Um, we Jacqueline has said Ariel Bonnell donates a hundred dollars for withdrawal yep. and a hundred rehab. Uh, sorry, from Rob Irvine. That's the second one. All righty. So Fantastic. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Good on you. Yes, Rob. And the Woods family is matching Mr. Benari's donation. So thank you. To rehabilitation. That's that's two thousand. Uh, 1,000. Sorry, 1,000. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Nice try. It was good, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, anything else? Yeah, my father was a car dealer. Can you tell? You know? uh, anything else? Yes, Helen. I have had a fantastic anonymous donation, um, which in total is $20,000. Okay. Wow. Um, that's to be split uh, 7,000 for withdrawal, 6,000 for rehab, and 6,000 for aftercare. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, Anonymous. Yay. Good on you. Thank you. That's absolutely wonderful. All right. Okay, yes. Sorry, uh, Stephen. Thanks very much. Uh, 2,000 to aftercare on behalf of uh, Ryder Levitt Bucknell. Ryder Levitt Bucknell. Thank you so much. 2,000 to aftercare. Thank you. Unbelievable. This is looking very, very good. Anything else? Marvellous. Uh, yes, sorry. Hello, Ashley Lang. Can I do 100 to each? 100 to each. Ashley Lang, thank you so much. Yes, you can do 100 to each. Fantastic. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to donate on behalf of my father because I was just checking the details of, of uh, Sir David Martin and it turns out that my father joined the Navy in the same year, in 1947. His career didn't go as well. And possibly, you know, Sir Dave was in charge of him at some point. Uh, I'd imagine he was a signalman on the Canimbla for about three years. And I think he went in as a signalman and came out as a signalman pretty much, I think, as far as I can, I can gather. So I'll put 100 each onto each one of two uh, in memory of, uh, of Peter Herbert Valentine. So, uh, excellent. Yay. Signalman, first class. Yes, Helen. So many years ago, James, you broke the Guinness World Book of Records for the number of saxophonists oh, yeah. that played yeah. externally yeah. in an outside venue at yes. Darling Harbour. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to pledge $100 because my daughter, who's sitting over there, was one of those saxophonists. Oh, okay. Hello. Um, Fantastic. And yeah, I would yeah. like to encourage anyone else who plays an instrument mm. to join me in that $100 pledge. Fantastic. Hi there, fellow sax player. How are you? What are you playing? Alto, tenor? Both. That's right. Right answer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Excellent. It was a very funny day. It was about, I don't know, I can't remember how many now. 5,000? Something like that. It was in the thousands of saxophone players gathered at Darling Harbour. And they rang me up and said, would you like to conduct them? And I went, yeah, I'm, I'm not really a conductor. They said, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so I waved, <laughs> waved an arm in front of them. That was about it. It was very funny. Um, all righty. How are we going? Good? I think we've done pretty well. Ladies and gentlemen, look at that. An extraordinary sum. 165000 Raised. James, sorry. Triple Care Farm. Julie, you've got one more there? Sorry, we do. We have two more. We've one from Rob Irving for aftercare. Um, and I just want to do 100 for your grandfather or your father as well. My father wasn't in the army, but he said, or in the Navy, in the war, he said, it's hard to be a war baby and a sex symbol. Yes. So that's for him. $100. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. All righty. Oh, Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you so much oh, for your generosity here you. tonight. Yes. What we're going to do is just uh, hide those totals and we're going to bring our presenters Come back on, it, and to show them what we've achieved tonight. So this is a beautiful moment when the, the figures are revealed. While, um, yeah, so we're doing that first, aren't we? Yeah, so they're going to come back and we'll do that. As I said, you can make connections, um, as our friend has, trying to do, has said a couple of times, she wants to help out with services and people and all that sort of stuff. So we're all here tonight. We'll all be having a bit of a drink afterwards to celebrate and, and say hello. So if you've got ways in which you can help, it's a network. You know, the, a big part of the funding network is creating those networks with people who have skills, who have ability, who have services they, they can offer, have experience they, they can offer and connection they can offer. And I'm sure you'll be able to help out in all sorts of ways there. Hello, how are you? Deb, how are you going? Come, welcome back. Tamara, Ellie, thanks for coming back. Come up on stage. 
because we like to watch this moment. It's very fun. Um, this is the moment when we're about to tell you what happened. Okay, we're going to reveal the sums to you. Okay, so don't you know? It's this is a good. This will be okay. Can we find out what happened for you first, Deb? Let's have a look. For withdrawal tonight, we raised forty-six thousand eight hundred dollars. Thank you, thank you for your generosity. It means a lot to those kids. Fantastic, thank you, Deb. Excellent. Tamara, let's see what we got for rehabilitation tonight, shall we? Fifty-four thousand three hundred dollars. <laughs> yes, you can say, "Oh shit!" <laughs> thank you so much. It's honestly, you have no idea how this will help our young people that we work with. From the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate it. <laughs> Fantastic, thanks, Tamara. All righty, Ellie, how did you help out everyone with aftercare? $64,200. I usually laugh when I'm, like, overwhelmed. I'm just... Um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm lost for words. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's good. That's fine. <laughs> Excellent. Wonderful. There you go. Bravo. Absolutely terrific. So another big round of applause for Deborah, for Tamara and, and Ellie. You can uh, wander off now if you like. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Excellent. Now, while they recover from that shock, uh, can I invite the, uh, the, the board chair of the Sir David Martin Foundation, this Captain Will Martin, up onto the stage to hear about the impact of what we've all raised together tonight. Will. Yeah. How good is James Valentine? We are in your debt, sir, thank you. As we are to the Funding Network. Um, thank you so much for everything the Funding Network does. A big round of applause for them. Can we thank um, Helen Keneally, our General Manager, and her team who have put in a significant amount of work to make this thing happen? And there's been a committee that Helen put together, some from within the foundation, some from without, but they've all bonded over weeks and have made this thing come together in terms of getting you in the room, getting the people online, online, uh, finding sponsors, Moet, et cetera, et cetera, beer. Uh, that's not gone, uh, not, not been easy and has been a hard slog and we'd just like to thank the committee also. Thank you. Um, Please don't for a moment underestimate the power and impact of every single dollar you've donated here tonight. Um, we know from research we did about five years ago, uh, when we needed to find out the impact of every dollar spent on Triple Care Farm, we needed to know the first, second, third and fourth order effects, how deep it goes. And so we did a research paper called The Social Return on Investment to find out the social return. And it turned out that for every dollar donated, uh, the community, the society, Australia, gets $2.9 back as a benefit. And this comes from, as I say, the first, second, third and fourth order effects of keeping young people out of hospital, keeping young people out of prison, and dare I say it, keeping young people out of the morgue. Now, at our graduations every year in December, when most graduates come back, regardless of when they actually left the program, we invite a parent to stand up and tell us a story on uh, what it felt to be the parent and, and to represent all of the parents. And two years ago, a woman stood up representing all parents and said, I've got a speech here and I always knew that I'd be delivering this speech, but I thought it was going to be a eulogy. And she said, I never kind of knew that it would be a speech about celebration and exhilaration. And so for a moment, can you just think about the hope and joy that this mother then had as a result of knowing that she was going to give this speech through hope and celebration rather than delivering a eulogy at the funeral of her child. Hope and relief and celebration is a massive thing. So the impact that your dollars have is extraordinary. So don't underestimate that. We thank you very much. 
We're thrilled that you're here, whether you're in the room or online. It's a massive impact you've made. Um, don't underestimate it. And also don't be strangers. You're now on our list, so look out. Um, you'll be getting emails. In fact, they're in your phone right now. So on your way home tonight, just check out what's going on there. There'll be information. There'll be invitations. We'd specifically like you to come and have a look at Triple Care Farm. Uh, we don't pretend that we run Triple Care Farm. Mission Australia does that, but we fund Mission Australia so that they can make it operate. We provide the operational funds. Um, but come and have a look at it. If anything you've heard tonight's made you think, wow, I wouldn't, wouldn't mind going to have a look at that woodwork program, that music program, that gym, um, et cetera, et cetera, just come on down. We run uh, lunches in the country down there. We run lunches in the city as well, if you're interested, just to give you some more information. Someone like Anelli would come and speak at one of those lunches and provide you some information. Um, so come on down. Don't be strangers. We'd love to have you stay on our list, remain engaged, and occasionally chip in some cash. Thanks very much, and thank you, James. Thank you. All right. Um, now, as uh, Will said, you'll get some emails, but you can also hop on over to the Sir David Martin Foundation's fundraising page to fulfil your pledge if you like. Tomorrow, keep an eye out for that email, as he's saying. So we'll give you the details of what's uh, happening. There'll also be a link to tonight's stream, so if you want to show anybody else what was going on, share it with your networks and so on, and encourage others to uh, support the Sir David Martin Foundation and Triple Care Farm, you can uh, do it while that. If you could leave your completed pledge card in the designated box on, the, on your way out there, that would be great, and you'll be getting, uh, you know, as he said, uh, emails updating with the impact. That this, has had, that this has had tonight. Can I get a big round of applause for Investor and NextGen.net for their generous support? $30,000 to kick us off, 10000 for each. And to all the team at ASX for making this work uh, this, this evening. Have a great e rest of the evening. Thanks so much for coming along. See you somewhere soon.